In order to secure our glue blocks to our neck blocks, so then that assembly can be attached to the tuner plate, we want to do attach the glue block to the neck. I smooth out the edges and it's not critical, just make it smooth. This edge is not critical. However, right on the inside edge here, make sure there's no glue. I cleaned that one out already. This one has a lot of glue in it, so I'll use a chisel and I'll clean that off. Then when I line up my neck into position, we want to cut this to length. based on the fact that we're going to have another glue block, small one, right on the inside here. So we want to have the length th at least three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch back on both sides from this inside line. So we'll cut that to length, clean up all the joints, um, also, in order to make this glue block from our rough piece of stock, I put a line that's four millimeters down from the top, and I will bevel this way to meet that. That will give us the perfect block when we put it in this way. The bevel will match pretty close to our top side right here and that will give us a nice smooth and uh, good transition point and a good glue area to attach that part of the side. So I'm going to bevel this, I'm going to clean up these blocks and then we'll continue. I've cleaned up my glue blocks, I've cut them to length, I've cleaned up the edge, they fit nice and snug. I make sure that my B side is on the B side of the workboard to the B side, B side, B, A side, A side, A side. The other thing I did is since we cut a relief here, I need to take one eighth inch off the edge and I did that. So now that this is lined up, I can see that if I turn it all over, it should all line up perfectly on the bottom here. And again, we're going to be sanding this more. So it's not if it's off by a little bit, don't worry about it. It will work. So time to glue it up. So I like to put a little bit of glue on the tongue. Again, not too much. Put a little on the end grain. The end grain doesn't hold really well, but it's it's going to hold good, good enough. I take a couple of clamps. Clamp it tight. And you always, when you clamp, you always want to have a little bit of glue squeeze out. That's important. And we want to clean up that glue squeeze out as soon as we can. So I should have had a, a little stick or something to work with. I use a little piece of scrap. And we want to wipe off all the excess glue. And I'll get a paper towel with some water on it and wipe that down. Especially on this side.
and right here. So it's all aligned and glued up. Set that one aside. And again, align it where it's supposed to be. Make sure we have the A's. We have it facing the right direction. We turn it over so it aligns flat on the bottom. And we know that's the way it's going to attach. So I'll, once again, put a little glue on. I always watch that whenever I clamp, sometimes it slides around and I need to reseat it. But these are holding pretty steady, which is good. And my glue will squeeze out once again, scrape off the bulk of it. Use my wet paper towel and wipe out the rest. And that's looking good. So we'll let this dry up for 30 minutes and then we can continue. So after this, the next step is we're going to glue our two neck pieces right up here. It's been approximately 30 minutes. We'll take off and everything is looking good. This is side A. side B. Looking at my layout I can see that when I marked my side, my neck, I actually had it lined up wrong so now I have to recut it. So I will align where it belongs Mark I finished making the adjustments on the neck pieces. So I have reestablished my center lines on my tuna template. I put down a piece of wax paper so when we glue up it won't stick to the workboard in case there's any squeeze out. I aligned my lines, my center line, this is all ready. A on the A side. And I test the fit. And I test the fit on this side. And everything looks good for the glue up. So I will proceed with the glue up. And by the way, I spend some time to really make sure that when I fit, this is a nice snug fit all the way around. We'll let it dry for, again, 30 minutes or more, and then we'll come back, take the clamps off, and go to the next phase. I wanted to show you that you can see that the curve that I made for the top of the car didn't exactly match the curve on my board. And that's okay. Slight variations are fine. And the other thing, if you notice, that 
this hole is a little bit closer to the edge. Again, it happens and every time you build one handmade it's going to have slight variations. That is not a problem. If I was going to do this in production I would make a jig to make sure that I have perfect alignment every time but this is a demonstration of how to make one one at a time. It's been about 30 minutes so let's take off the clamps and check the fit. It looks good. So we have our neck assembly with our tuner plate and the next step is on the back side we're going to drill three holes on each neck and insert a dowel. It's not required for strength but it's more of a decorative touch. Using my square set at three eighths of an inch I'm going to draw a center line on each of the necks and now I'm going to measure up from the bottom of our tuna plate I'm going to measure up on the center line one inch two and a half inches and four inches one inch Two and a half, four. I'll go over to the drill press, drill the holes, and then we'll come back and uh, insert the dowels. I am not going to drill all the way through. I do not want to see the dowels on the front side. I just want to see them on the back side. So I'll set my depth. This is one inch. I'll set it to approximately three quarters of an inch. Now that the holes are drilled, we'll fill it with a dowel. Now, I'm using walnut. Why? Because I have it. You can use any dowel, any color. If you like the contrasting wood, use a darker wood. If you don't, um, you can find a poplar or a lighter colored maple, maybe, um, dowel. So anything you want to use is good enough. And all you need is a tiny bit of glue on the tip and as we push it in most of it's going to squeeze out anyways and then I don't have to worry about cutting it super close because we're going to cut it We're going to be sanding and smoothing it off, so so we'll just proceed with all the all the holes. So now we have our dowels in. So the next step is we are going to attach this assembly to the workboard. But first we'll need a few shims to hold it above the top so we have the right level. And that will become more clear as we move on.